Workers' Compensation and Alternative Risk Management We all know the challenge of managing the rising cost of workers' compensation requires the integration of a traditional risk management process. In this lesson, we will study workers' compensation, a corporate risk management program, role of the risk manager, corporate risk management process, risk management controls, and risk management primary prevention programs, secondary and tertiary prevention insurance layer. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain the workers' compensation, a corporate risk management program, discuss the role of the risk manager and corporate risk management process, describe the risk management controls and monitoring, explain the risk management, primary prevention programs, secondary and tertiary prevention, Discuss the alternative risk financing and types of alternative risk financing and explain the insurance layer and components of risk financing. Risk are events or occurrences that prevent an organization from meeting its primary goals. Risks contain two important parts. The probability that the risk will occur and the consequences to the organization as a result of that occurrence. Risk management involves the determination of these probabilities, the consequences of potential risk and the identification of the actions that can be taken to limit the possibilities and the degree of the consequences. The initial activity in the development of a workers' compensation risk management program is to ensure the active support and involvement by senior management. As such, it is important to first study the organizational relationships between the manager responsible for risk management and other managers in the organization. Secondly, it is important to determine the types and methods of communication between the risk manager and all other managers. The function of the risk manager is not to personally minimize the occurrence and the adverse effects of the losses related to worker injuries and illnesses, but instead to coordinate the efforts of other managers in the prevention of injuries and illnesses for which each of them has some responsibility and therefore control. A manager with line authority over employees has the right to order individuals to do a specific task mainly those concerned directly to production, marketing or finance. The staff manager has the right to advise and persuade these other managers to take actions designed to minimize the potential for worker injury or illness. These managers may decide to accept or reject the advice and as such are responsible for the results of that decision. The three key phases in the risk management process must be a part of a structured process. The phases include risk planning, risk assessment, prioritization and handling, and risk monitoring. The planning process begins with a risk management approach that includes an evaluation of the present or needed level of senior management support, a full assessment of the procedures, presently in place to determine the probability that risks are present and the consequences to the organization as a result of worker injuries and illnesses. The assessment to identify the losses that can occur related to worker injuries and illnesses and analyzing how likely and how severe those losses may be relates to the aforementioned structured process. This is the first step towards solving the problems these exposures pose by controlling the losses they may generate and or by financing the restoration of these losses at the least possible cost. The identification of potential losses related to the health and safety of workers is unique to other areas of risk management. The frequency and severity of losses will also relate to the gender and age demographics of the working population. Another factor is the lack of engineering controls or the lack of supervision provided to ensure compliance with safety rules and regulations. 
to estimate the probabilities of various types of losses, empirical loss data of the organization itself. Other firms in the same industry or statistics on society may be used. A second source of information for determining the frequency of future losses is the use of theoretical probability distribution. As a prospective activity, risk management focuses on losses that may strike in the future and on steps taken now or in the future that the organization can minimize the adverse effects of these possible losses. After assessing the types, frequency and severity of potential causes of worker injuries and illnesses, one is able to formulate alternatives for dealing with these risks. Two types of decisions are needed to implement risk management techniques. First is technical decisions as to exactly what action should be taken and second is managerial decisions as to how and by whom this action should be taken. Methods of risk management control are risk avoidance to completely eliminate the chance of a particular type of loss. An example is the identification of a workplace hazard risk to which engineering controls are applied. Loss prevention to reduce but not totally eliminate the chance of a given loss. An example is the initiation of a job rotation program and warm-up exercises to prevent ergonomic related disorders. Loss reduction to reduce the severity of those losses which do not occur. Separation or diversification of loss exposures to reduce concentrations of value subject to a single accident and to make aggregate losses more predictable. An example is the development of an organized approach by a facility to handle the workers' compensation program, to include such programs as committees, incident investigations, light duty positions, working with medical and legal personnel, etc. Utilization of non-insurance transfers which rid the organization of any responsibility for the loss. After the selection and implementation of risk management techniques or controls certain general results such as reductions in losses or in insurance premiums are expected. As such, techniques to monitor the results are imperative. Effective monitoring and control has three aspects. Setting standards for defining acceptable performance, comparison of actual results with these standards and correcting actual results to more fully comply with standards. First is management commitment and employee participation. A commitment by management at each facility is imperative and is generally a function of the goals set by corporate senior management. As in other areas of risk management, workers' compensation cost control programs must be given priority attention in order to maintain the health of the workforce to ensure longevity, decreased absenteeism and increased productivity. Next is workers' compensation and the safety program. The cost of workers' compensation is directly correlated to the viability of a facility's safety and health program. Safety programs include a significant psychosocial component with applicable engineering activities. Next is workplace analysis to determine the risk to the health and safety of workers at the facility assessment of the risk related to workplace hazards and regulatory compliance are necessary. Next is incident investigations. The participation by members of management and employees ensures the necessary thoroughness to prevent future occurrences. In addition, a thorough assessment limits liabilities to both the facility and its personnel. Next is safety knowledge and accountability of line management. Those safety personnel as risk managers can advise line managers, only the line manager controls the actions of workers. In order to meet the responsibilities for the safety of the workers they supervise, the line manager must be knowledgeable in the science of safety management and regulatory requirements. Next is employee training. 
based on the hazard assessment risk data and the requirements of regulatory guidelines, a successful risk management program for controlling workers' compensation cost must include an organized training program. Next is hiring decisions. To the extent allowed by regulatory guidelines, certain judgments in the decisions related to the risk involved in hiring should be made. Decisions can also be made after a review of available records within the Department of Labor concerning an individual's job history. A worker's compensation plan in those cases where injury and or illnesses have occurred procedures to manage the risk to the company are necessary. These risks include disruption of production, loss of key personnel, pain and suffering, disability payments, rising insurance cost, sightings by regulatory agencies and damage to public relations to mention a few. Next is management of recordable cases. The criteria for recording injuries and illnesses are outlined by regulatory guidelines set forth by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. These include cases requiring more than first aid, restricted duty, time away from work, loss of consciousness and point of operation amputations. Next is management of lost time cases. The management of cases in which the worker is away from the job, the risk manager and the other members of management need to be actively involved. Next is impairment or disability settlement cases. In those cases when impairment results from the injury or illness, the risk manager must assess the potential losses to the company while having appropriate concern for the needs and rights of the employee. Next is communication. Employers often show support at the time of injury, but strong communication during the entire recovery process has an equally important impact on the injured worker's ability to fend off psychological tailspin. Large corporations and government agencies commonly use some type of alternative risk financing to finance their property and liability loss exposures. Medium sized and smaller companies generally purchase commercial insurance for the same purpose. Alternative risk financing, however, is not just for the big multinational companies. Many other firms can enjoy some of the benefits of alternative risk financing, such as improved cash flow and a lower total cost of risk. Risk financing is the use of insurance and other techniques to pay for loss obligations. Alternative risk financing is the self-assumption of risk combined with insurance to finance an organization's property and liability losses. Organizational size is not very significant. The most important criteria is losses. The casualty lines of insurance workers' compensation, general liability including products, and automobile liability are best candidates for alternative risk financing. Workers' compensation and liability claims tends to be paid over long time frames, one to five years or more. Insurers of these lines generate substantial investment income on their reserves until losses are fully paid. Mid-sized organizations using alternative risk financing can earn investment income on reserves that was formerly earned by an insurance company. Insurers have developed many colorful titles for what amounts to a handful of alternative risk financing techniques. Guaranteed cost remains an attractive option, particularly in a highly competitive insurance market. Guaranteed cost means the insured pays a one-time premium based either on a rate x for example per payroll or property values or a flat amount. The insurer assumes the loss obligations covered under the policy. Retrospective rating plans called retros have been filed in most states for workers compensation and other lines of insurance. They historically have been loss sensitive plans in which the insured 
pays a standard premium that is adjusted after policy expiration based on actual loss experience. As the name suggests, a large deductible plan means an organization assumes a substantial per accident or per occurrence deductible. Large deductible plans are currently very popular. Self-insurance is often the least expensive risk financing arrangement. It is the retention of loss obligations and payment of those obligations as they become due. Self-insurance is distinguished from non-insurance in that self-insurance makes a formalized accrual of liabilities. Captive insurance is a formalized method to pre-fund risk through an insurance subsidiary called a captive. Captives are typically owned by a parent company or a related party. Captive insurers are usually established in a favorable domicile. These domiciles minimize regulation of these special purpose insurers, understanding that most captives are a form of self-insurance. With risk financing, it is common to consider an organization's risk and or insurance arrangements in terms of various layers of cover. Primary layer contains the high frequency or low severity losses, which are essentially predictable. It is unlikely that any single loss in this layer could seriously impact a large organization, although an accumulation of claims in any one financial period may create a problem. Working layer contains the medium frequency or medium severity losses, where there are only a few losses a year expected. An individual loss may seriously distort the budget or financial performance of any operating unit, although it is not likely to present a major problem for the group as a whole. Catastrophe layer contains the low frequency or high severity losses. An individual loss of this magnitude can seriously distort the financial results of the organization in any one financial year and may even threaten the whole organization. It is essential that insurance or an alternative method of risk transfer is used to deal with these kinds of risk. The use of alternative risk financing in the form of a high deductible program, self-insurance or captive insurance, requires careful coordination of program components. The required services can be purchased independently from vendors or bundled by the insurer that provides excess or stop-loss insurance. Risk financing program components include claim administration, loss control, policyholder services, certificates administration, actuarial services, excess or stop-loss insurance or reinsurance, security or collateral requirements, and program management and oversight. Administrative demands on an organization are accentuated when it purchases unbundled services independent of the insurance arrangement. Purchasing such services, on the other hand, often gives greater control and cost savings. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. A manager with line authority over employees has the right to order individuals to do a specific task, mainly those concerned directly to production, marketing or finance. Right or wrong? Right. Two types of decisions are needed to implement risk management techniques are technical and managerial. Right or wrong? Right. The cost of workers' compensation is directly correlated to the viability of a facility's safety and health program. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Risk are events or occurrences that prevent an organization from meeting its primary goals. Risk contains two important parts the probability that the risk will occur and the consequences to the organization as a result of that occurrence. The initial activity in the development of a workers' compensation risk management program is to ensure 
the active support and involvement by senior management. The three key phases in the risk management process must be a part of a structured process. The phases include risk planning, risk assessment, prioritization and handling, and risk monitoring. The planning process begins with a risk management approach that includes an evaluation of the present or needed level of senior management support, a full assessment of the procedures present in place to determine the probability that risks are present and the consequences to the organization as a result of worker injuries and illnesses. As a prospective activity, risk management focuses on losses that may strike in the future and on steps taken now or in the future that the organization can minimize the adverse effects of these possible losses. After assessing the types, frequency and severity of potential causes of worker injuries and illnesses, one is able to formulate alternatives for dealing with these risks. Effective monitoring and control has three aspects. Setting standards for defining acceptable performance. Comparison of actual results with these standards and correcting actual results to more fully comply with standards. First are management commitment and employee participation. A commitment by management at each facility is imperative and is generally a function of the goals set by corporate senior management. A workers' compensation plan in those cases where injury and or illnesses have occurred, procedures to manage the risk to the company are necessary. These risks include disruption of production, loss of key personnel, pain and suffering, disability payments, rising insurance cost, sightings by regulatory agencies and damage to public relations to mention a few. Large corporations and government agencies commonly use some type of alternative risk financing to finance their property and liability loss exposures. Insurers have developed many colorful titles for what amounts to a handful of alternative risk financing techniques. With risk financing, it is common to consider an organization's risk and or insurance arrangements in terms of various layers of cover.